Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you my first beauty empties in a long time. It has been quite a while since I sat down and filmed my empties videos because last year I just kind of couldn't find the time in my schedule and so I let it slide. But this year I wanna get back on track with sharing with you empties. So I have been setting aside my empties for all of January and February. And I have some thoughts on all these products. I think this is such a great way to share with you some very thorough reviews on products. I oftentimes feel like I don't really get a grasp on something until I've used it up and I'm either missing it from my routine or I'm happy to see it gone. So I'm really excited to share with you my first empties for 2020. I'm hoping to get back on track and do this kind of every other month, depending on how much stuff I have to share with you. But I have been going through products very consistently and I really do miss having this as a part of my channel on the regular. So I am excited. I hope that you are looking forward to hearing my thoughts on all these products. We're going to be talking about hair care, skin care, a little bit of miscellaneous, and then some makeup empties as well. So why don't we just hop right on into it? So kicking it off with hair care, I am really happy to say that I have a handful of hair care items, only four, but still. I oftentimes only have just shampoo that I work my way through. I am not a hair product kind of gal at all. I don't use almost anything in my hair except shampoo and conditioner. And then sometimes I use other items like this one right here. This is the Derma E Scalp Scalp. So this is the Derma E Scalp Relief Treatment. This product is sensational. It's an item that I am so happy to have discovered. I did receive this in PR from Derma E and I'm so grateful that it's become a part of my regular routine. I have actually received a secondary one from them in PR. I got that like last year in maybe July or August, something like that. And I finally finished this one up at the beginning of this year, even though I had no reason to savor it. I just don't reach for hair care products that often. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's just not, not a part of my routine, not something I can be bothered with at all. But when I did reach for this, oh my goodness, it was amazing. This has a cooling, minty, tea tree kind of sensation. It leaves the scalp feeling so soothed, so relieved. It truly is like a little miracle in a bottle. I have been using the other one already very, very often. I find that I need this more so in the winter time than I do in the summer. And that's likely why I kind of fell out of using this when I, even though I was very close, I feel like I was really, really close to done with it in like August. And then I ended up just kind of forgetting to reach for it until the winter months came back around. This product is so nice. I have a very irritable scalp. I don't often get dandruff, sometimes I do but more so it just feels very tight, very uncomfortable. I'm very hyper aware of my scalp and like, it's just always, it's always lingering. Like it's always there. My scalp is always there and I'm always aware of it. And I don't like that feeling. Be, being aware of my scalp is just so, so annoying. So this really helps to make me feel like my scalp feels really good, but then ongoing, I'm not aware of my scalp. <laughs> which is great. It's truly the end goal for someone like myself. So loved this product. I am working my way through another one and I have made a good dent out of that one already. And I think this is something that ongoing I am going to purchase consistently because it really is a nice like added step to the end of my shower routine to really just treat my scalp right. And I also have two shampoo and conditioner, well, one shampoo and one conditioner products from Derma E that are in the same line. I adore these. I have been through multiples of these already. I've talked about both of these multiple times on my channel and I love these products. Again, they are that cooling, minty sort of sensation on the scalp, very refreshing, but also soothing. And it's just a really, really great line in general, but these two products are amazing. I have received two shampoos and two conditioners in PR. And I've also purchased this product, I wanna say two or three times, possibly three times. The ones that I currently have in my shower are ones that I did purchase for myself. And I wanna show you something about what's going on with this newest batch. I think that they've recently, well, I know that they've recently changed the packaging 
and I'm not here for it. I'm not happy with it at all. So this one is the one that I did purchase. I ended up actually having to decant this, the product that came in this packaging into the old packaging from what I received in PR. And we can distinguish these because this is the Canadian packaging with French and English. And this is the American packaging, which I got straight from Dermot E with just English on it. So in the Canadian packaging, I hope this is not the way that it's always going to be moving forward. Hopefully this is just a temporary kind of move to try out new packaging, but it is not good. I have never once in my life, same with how I want to feel about my scalp, I've never once had to think about the packaging of my shampoo. Never. I've never considered it to be flawed in any sort of way. I've never expected a flaw from a, any sort of shampoo packaging. But this last batch, this one, it's impossible to squeeze. You can see I'm using two hands and I can hardly squeeze the packaging. So when you're in the shower, if you're trying to just squeeze out a little bit into the palm of your hand, not, not happening, like literally not possible. It is so firm. In comparison, this is the old packaging for the conditioner because I was not able to depot the conditioner in this packaging into this old packaging. So I'll show you by contrast. Nice and squishy, easy going. It's, you know, conditioner and shampoo just flow on out of here, no problem. So I really hope that this is a very temporary thing. It's really frustrating, but what's inside is really great. But I will advise you, if you're gonna pick this up, do the squeeze test. Ensure it sounds and looks more like this. I know it'll be full, so it might be a little bit more difficult to get the full effect, but make sure it doesn't feel like this. This is not good. Great product, just really, really disappointed with the change in the packaging and hoping that that is very much temporary. But on to the next product. This is the Acure Dry Shampoo. This is the rosemary and peppermint kind of scent profile. When it comes to hair products, that's just like my thing because I find that those are just so soothing on my irritable scalp. So this product was one that comes in like a shaker. I personally am really trying to avoid aerosols um, as much as possible. And because I don't use that many hair products on the regular, something like this actually has a really nice long shelf life as well because it's just simply a powder. But this packaging is like a kind of spice shaker kind of packaging. And I found that I didn't really enjoy the process of using this. The product inside was okay. It did the trick. It absorbed the oils on my scalp and on my hair, no problem. But I ended up actually depotting this product into an old Briogeo dry shampoo container, which I have actually with me here, because I want to show you how this is so much nicer. This product has kind of like an aerator here. And so you squeeze the product and it diffuses the product so nicely. It doesn't just just like, pile on a ton of product onto your hair that you have to like really work into the scalp and hope that it dissolves the kind of white cast. This always just helps product to just land perfectly on the hair and you really don't need to do too much work to work it in and to reduce the white cast. But with this, I found sometimes I could shake it and a ton of product would kind of come out and it would be very much apparent on my scalp. I do like the simplicity of this packaging. So it's pretty easy to just unscrew this and decant it into this old packaging. But for convenience, I did end up just purchasing the Briogeo one once I finished the Acure one just a couple months ago. I know it's quite costly. The Briogeo is definitely more expensive than Acure, but because I just run through it so slowly and I really need it to work on the instances when I need it, I just find myself wanting to spend that little bit more for the formula and for the packaging itself. The formula of the Briogeo is just a little bit finer. It's not quite as heavy on the hair. It definitely is a lot lighter. And I do think that it's in part because it's meant to go through like the straw in this packaging. So it's very, very refined. 
very soft and lightweight versus this can feel a little bit more heavy and a little bit more gritty in comparison, but they're both really good options if you're looking for a powder dry shampoo. I recently polished off this product right here. This is by The Inky List. This is the Oat Cleansing Balm. This was a really nice product and I did receive this in PR and I'm really grateful to have tried it through PR because this is something I probably wouldn't have picked up on my own, not because I am not really into the inky list or anything like that. I just really didn't think that I wanted to have this in my life. For some reason, I just didn't feel compelled by this product. Do you know what I mean? It just never, never drew my eye. And I have heard other people talk about it and rave about it and like it, but it just didn't really seem to interest me. And I do think I will end up repurchasing this for myself in the future. I did purchase the e.l.f. cleansing balm just out of sheer convenience. I could just go to shoppers and pick it up, but I do think I would rather pick this up from Sephora once I finish off the e.l.f. one because I love the convenience of the squeezy tube. You can see, I really liked it enough that I actually cut right into it and tried to get every last little bit out of here but the squeezy tube is the key for me. I don't know what it is about cleansing balms when they're in tubs, which is more often how they come. It is so annoying to me to have to undo the lid and then do it back up. Such a minor inconvenience. Again, one of those like product experiences that I didn't have to think about and I loved it for that. I like cleansing oils in pumps, that kind of thing. There's just something about a cleansing balm in a tub that I just find really annoying now that I've used this <laughs> in comparison. And this product itself is very nice. It was a very neutral kind of scent to it, but it was kind of calming, very relaxing. It was just a clean kind of scent and it worked into the skin very, very well. Broke down makeup really nicely without getting like buildup in my eyes and in my hairline, which I can get with some other products. I always would just remove this with a microfiber cloth and then do a second cleanse afterwards. And I found that it left my skin feeling very balanced, never felt stripped or overly kind of oily either because a lot of cleansing balms can do one extreme or the other. My skin just felt very comfortable. And I think this is great, a very affordable product, great for the amount of product that you get as well. Five fluid ounces in here. It is actually like this size, so it's huge. And it's great. I really enjoyed it. I will be repurchasing it once I finish off the e.l.f. one, but I do want to work through that one first. And then my second cleanse is almost always, pretty much exclusively this, the Pacifica Kale Detox Deep Cleaning Face Wash. I think I've always said deep cleansing face wash. It says deep cleaning. Either way, I've been using this for absolutely years. I used this when my skin was very oily, when I had pretty bad acne. I used this when my skin was hella dehydrated, when I was on a Purus and acne medication and it dried my skin so, so much out. I use this now that my skin is much more normal. I find that this is just the be all end all of cleansers for me. I don't really stray from this one, to be honest, because it just works. It doesn't leave any sort of residue at all but it also isn't like that squeaky clean tight sensation either. It's right in the middle at this very, very comfortable sort of middle ground and it's great. I really love it. I have been through so many of this product and as you can see, I cut into the oat cleansing balm, but I know there's no point in cutting into the Pacifica one because I've gone through so many of these. I have cut into it in the past and because this packaging is just so perfect for the product and the, the, the texture is just so perfect in this product. Every last little usable dollop of product just slips right out of this packaging so I don't have to cut into it and I actually can use every last possible drop. I love it. I love it so much. I'll never stop talking about that product I feel like because it's just so good. It's so good for all skin types. From my own experience, it works even though it's targeted as technically being for oily skin. Yeah, oily and blemish prone skin skin types. It works for every single skin type I've ever encountered, encountered and I've gone from one extreme to the next for sure. And then I would finish off the routine with this guy right here. This is a great nighttime moisturizer. I received this in PR from Kate Somerville last year, I think towards the end of the summer. 
and I have worked my way through it because it is just so good. I've used up every last possible drop. This is the Delicate Recovery Cream. This is so nice. I was using this pretty much exclusively recently as my nighttime moisturizer because it is very simple and yet extremely effective. It is fragrance free. It is extremely rich and moisturizing and emollient and it made my skin just feel so plump and moisturized but it didn't feel like that heavy, greasy kind of feeling. It does technically say that you can use it morning or night. I personally just prefer it at nighttime in the morning. I just keep things very simple with basically just a serum and then my um, sunscreen. But at nighttime, I love to use this to just really hydrate, really plump up the skin. It was a beautiful product and I really enjoyed it. However, it's not all that different from the First Aid Beauty Ultra Repair Cream, which is kind of my go-to simply because my skin never has any sort of reaction to that whatsoever. It works so well for my skin. And I do already have a full size of that one in my life simply because it's a go-to for me. I absolutely have to have it on hand these days. Um, so I won't repurchase this in the immediate future, but I do think I would like to repurchase this eventually a nice glass packaging it feels very luxe it just feels very luxe on the skin and in the hands when you're holding the package itself but I loved it I really did enjoy this product and I'm really grateful I had an opportunity to try this through PR and then I have two lip balm kind of products that I've recently finished off the first one being the Kopari lip glossy this is a go-to this is a product that I've reached for for the last few years and always have one on hand. I already have another one in back stock that I'm working my way through. I've already made a decent sized dent in it as well. It is so nourishing on the lips. It feels so smooth and hydrating. It's very cushiony. It's just a great product to not only nourish the lips, but repair the lips as well. I have had times when my lips were not so happy with me, very crusty, chapped but this just sorts it out in no time and feels so good so good i always have this on hand i always recommend this product as well it has a very very light coconut kind of scent to it because it is primarily coconut oil it has an amazing texture that just glides onto the lips and as you can see i cut into it so that i can stick my little pinky finger in there and get every last possible drop out of here because it is so good and even though I always have a second one as a backup I have to use every possible drop out of each and every one of those tubes I love that product it's a absolute long-term and forever favorite I think in my opinion and then I also finished off this lip balm recently this is the Nova Scotia Fisherman sea salt and caramel lip balm this product was pretty good I didn't dislike it by any means, um, but I don't think I'll be repurchasing it in the immediate future. It's a tube that you don't actually twist up, but instead it just has like a, uh, like a, I don't know what you call this, a little component that you just kind of push up using your finger. So I like the simplicity of this packaging. It makes it a lot easier, I'm sure, to recycle because I just have to pop this out, probably just throw this part away and then recycle just the tube here. And I think that that, that is, great. It doesn't really mean that that would be everyone's preferred user experience, but I personally think that it's it does the trick just fine. And I dug every last possible bit out of this product. As you can see, it has like these rings here and I scraped everything out. And I really did like this product. I found that it was really nice to wear underneath of like lipsticks and lip liners. It didn't really create a balmy kind of effect where other ones do like if I were to wear the lip glossy underneath of some lip products it would just become uh, very malleable it would definitely make things kind of move around a little bit because this is very oily but this balm just kind of locked into place while creating a nice hydrated barrier on the lips felt very nice and comfortable very lightweight but still rich enough and effective enough at moisturizing the lips as well. I don't know how accessible this brand is. I know it's a Canadian brand, so I'm not sure how accessible it is, but I do think it's a good enough product to recommend. I have actually finished off one of these in the past as well. 
And you know what, if I were to see this in store and I'm in need of a lip balm because you can never have enough lip balms, I'd probably pick this up just to have on hand for whenever it's necessary. I have only one body care product that I finished off recently and it's one that I purchase on the regular. It is the Crate 61 Bar Soap. This one in particular is the Yucca Mint, so it's eucalyptus and peppermint scent. Delectable, so delicious and so refreshing but I have purchased several different scents of this over the past few years. I adore this stuff. I think it's a really great bar soap, and I know bar soap's not for everyone, but I love that it is just minimal packaging. It's just simply this cardboard sleeve and the bar of soap comes in here. Bar soap is just great because it's no fuss, it's no extra packaging, it is so, so good, and the scents on these are really nice, and they don't linger by any means. Like a body wash would probably linger and like stick to your skin a lot more but because I have a fragrance allergy I don't really want that I just want to have something that smells good and then I wash it off and it comes and goes but it's an enjoyable experience while I'm using it I like this bar soap because it's not like one of those kind of squishy bar soaps that runs out very quickly I find that this lathers very well I can actually get a decent sud so I can shave my legs and my armpits with it no problem whatsoever it lathers up beautifully and it's a Canadian brand, so I quite like it. It's very accessible. I personally find mine either at, well, I've seen it many places now, but I get mine at the Real Canadian Superstore. It's also available on well.ca. It's also available at Winners. I recently saw the three packs at Winners and I thought that was great, but I ended up purchasing a three pack of the coconut scent just for ease and so that way I didn't have to think about repurchasing it for the next little while just because. Um, but I've tried many scents from this brand. Every single one has been great. I've definitely become a very loyal customer to this brand because it's very effective. It does the job just well. And I find that the price point is very good as well. And then for the final like miscellaneous product, I have the Purinata nail polish remover. This is a product that I've been repurchasing pretty frequently uh, over the last couple of years as well. I made the switch to these more natural nail polish removers and I've gone through quite a few different brands, but this is the one that I do like the most. I also like the Mineral Fusion one, but that packaging is bunk. Like no matter what, it always ends up leaking on me and I just can't deal with that because I wanna be able to lay this down in a drawer. I don't wanna have to always keep it standing up on top of my storage or anything like that. I wanna put it away. And the Pironata one is no issue when it comes to leaking whatsoever. It's very effective. It really does pull off all my nail polish with minimal effort. I really enjoy it. I have repurchased it again. I've already made a pretty significant dent in the one that I have because I do my nails every maybe four to seven days. I'm always painting my nails. It is something that I just really enjoy doing and I like having my nails painted always. It's just my personal preference. And yeah, this one is very good. One thing, and I have mentioned this in the past before, but one thing to note is that this does leave a residue on your nails. It has this kind of filmy, oily kind of residue that it will leave on your nails and on your hands. So you have to, have to, have to wash your hands after using this. I don't even want to like touch anything in my life because I'm worried that the nail polish remover will end up being a little bit of a nuisance and it'll get on something else. So I always wash my hands very thoroughly after using this, but that's it. It's really not any sort of issue for me. That being said though, because of this filmy kind of feeling, um, when I use this nail polish, I absolutely have to remove all of my nail polish. Like you can't just go and like spot remove one nail with this because of that residue. I, I can't, I, don't, I guess I don't have the skills to do that. Like back in the day when I was using like traditional nail polish remover, I could just remove one nail polish from one nail that kind of got smudged or one nail that, you know, chipped and I just want to replace the polish on that nail. I can't seem to get the swing of being able to do that with this particular formula because of that kind of residue. But it hasn't been any sort of problem for me. It hasn't been a hindrance to my life whatsoever. Now let's get into the good good. Let's get into the good stuff. I've got some makeup empties 
I'm really happy to see that I've used up a couple of products, not a ton, but still, I'm quite happy about some of these. First, the first two are both mini mascaras. These were the only two mascaras I had at the beginning of this year. So I have purchased new mascaras as replacements for these. So this first one was the Milk Makeup Kush Mascara. This was the birthday gift back in 2020 from Sephora. So I finally ended up, ended up opening it up at the end of last year. I'd say maybe like October or whatever. And I didn't love this like I thought I used to. I used to adore the Kush Mascara formula. It was my favorite. It was my be all end all. And maybe it's because I had this sitting in my collection for about a year before I ended up opening it. Um, maybe it dried out a little bit, although I hadn't opened it. I never cracked into it because I didn't want to use it until I could really enjoy it. But I found it was much more flaky than I remembered. It definitely didn't give me the volume and the impact that I used to feel like I got out of this. It just kind of fell flat for me this past time. So I won't be repurchasing it because it just didn't live up to what I had, had experienced with it before. I used to think that this was so volumizing. It was so thickening and so rich and dramatic and it never transferred or smudged on me before, but it was very flaky this past time. So that was a little bit disappointing actually. Very disappointing, I hate a flaky mascara. And then I also finished off this Bite Beauty Upswing Mascara Mini. This was the second mini of this that I had gone through. Um, like last year I used one up in about three months time and then I opened this, I, I wanna say last year in around November and I just recently finished it off. Really enjoy this formula, it is so nice. It's very, very dramatic, very voluminous, but still, almost like this fluffy lash look while being dramatic. I don't know how to describe it. It's indescribable, but it is beautiful. It is so nice, rich, rich black. I have actually repurchased this um, in the mini size. So this one was a point perk, I believe from Sephora, but I ended up purchasing the mini size from Sephora because recently they went on sale. They were half off for the mini and the full size. And I did the math and it ended up being so much more economical to buy the mini. And so I bought three of them <laughs> because I really like this formula, but I had already purchased something else. So I'm using currently the CoverGirl Exhibitionist Mascara. I don't love it near as much as I like the formula of this one. I find that it's good. It's what I'm wearing today. It's good. Like my lashes are nice and dramatic and black, but there's just something so remarkable and miraculous about this one in particular something. So she, she just got that something, you know, that, that's something that's indescribable, but, but beautiful. So the bite has quickly made its way to the very tip top of my favorites. It is going to be pretty much the mascara I use for the rest of this year. Once I finish off the CoverGirl Exhibitionist, I have three minis to work my way through and that'll, that'll take me out through all of 2022. That'll be the mascara of the year for me, I think. And then I have an exciting empty here, a lip gloss empty. And this is one of the products that I had on my products I want to finish up in 2022 list. So I'm happy I finally, well, not finally, but already actually worked my way through it. This is the Becca Glow Gloss in the shade Opal. Becca is no longer a brand, so you can no longer find this product, but it was a really nice nude kind of color for me. It was like pinky beige color that was very close to my natural lip color, very flattering on my skin tone. And it had this tiny bit of sheen, a little bit of shimmer, but it didn't look apparently glittery on the lips at all. It also had this like minty kind of taste and fragrance to it, but it wasn't like a tingly, um, plumping sort of sensation at all. It just was very like fresh feeling on the lips. Really, really liked it. And I took out the stopper. As you can see, I used up every last possible drop that I could get out of here and really liked it. Happy though to have a lip gloss out of my collection and used up. It feels really good, really good. And then I finished off two powders. One is technically a highlight in my makeup collection. So that feels amazing in my makeup inventory to be down one highlight. And that is the NYX Nectar. This came from the NYX um, highlight and contour kit, which is a palette that I bought, I think in like 2015 or 2016. 
worked my way through a couple of the products and then ended up just keeping this one because I did find it was a really nice soft highlighter. And recently I ended up actually mixing it and frankening it with my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder because this was nearing the end. There was very, very little product remaining in here and I thought that it might offer a really nice kind of glowy kind of look to this without looking artificial or too highlighty. And I really like the way that these turned out when I mixed these two products together. It was a really beautiful setting powder. So I'm happy that I did decide to do that and I was able to polish this off in its entirety. Look at that shiny pan. That's a beaut. And this is one of those products that I did also have on my products I wanna finish up in 2022 list. So two products already knocked off of that list. Neither of these were in my project pan, but I knew I wanted to focus on them regardless. I did really like this product when I used it on its own. I found that it was good, you know, it was a pretty standard setting powder in my opinion, nothing to necessarily write home about or anything that I would ever rave about, but I did think that it fit the bill, it did the trick just fine, but I really enjoyed it actually when it was mixed with that NYX product because it offered this soft luminous kind of look to the skin. It di didn't ever look very powdery or heavy on the skin. It was very, very nice on its own, did the trick just fine like I said, I personally will never repurchase it because it is very costly for what it is. And the shade range is just not there for me. It just ain't it. So I would definitely like your recommendations for a alternative to this or possibly an alternative to what this kind of provided me when I was mixed with the NYX. Um, something that offers a little bit of glow, very healthy looking powder. If you have any recommendations, I'd love to hear them. Once I finish off maybe one loose powder and one more pressed powder from my collection, I would like to purchase something in this product's place. But that is everything. I am really happy to see so many empties completed already for the year. I am definitely going to continue to be using up things from my collection. And I am really excited to get back on track to share these videos with you on a more consistent basis. I hope that you enjoyed hearing some of my thoughts on these products. Let me know if you've tried any of these things, what your experience was with them. And yeah, that is everything for today's video. Thank you so much for watching and for being here. It means so much more to me than I think you'll ever know, but I just love spending this time with you and hanging out with you. So yeah, that's everything. See you in the next one. Bye everyone.